hoping the music doesn't just cut out this time. Happy Wednesday! I know what it is. It's because I have sound effects muted. So that as soon as it kicks in, it just cuts it out. Outrageous, right? Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope you are doing well and you've had a great week. It's good to be back in the flow with things. And so I find myself saying what I used to say a while ago uh, before I got really unwell, which was um, the weeks just fly by and it's back here already. Um, Seven days is a long time though, and especially in the context of last week's show, um, I want to thank everyone who tuned in. Um, for those that missed it, it was all about Ukraine, um, mainly focused on the humanitarian crisis that's taking place there, but also touching upon um, the basic, you know, the basics of the conflict and, and what is happening. Um, things are changing day by day, and uh, it was only two or three days ago that I received a text from a friend of mine. Uh, who I hadn't heard from in a few years, who lives in Ukraine, who was just saying that they're in the process of heading to um, the uh, western border to cross into Poland. Um, their brother it has been has decided to stay behind, like many um, adult men, to fight uh, in uh, Kharkiv, I believe is the name of the uh, the town, which has been pretty much flattened by Russian forces. Um, she'd lost contact with him and her mum had decided to stay as well. So um, she she messaged me uh, earlier today to say she's now in Poland and she expressed um, such immense um, pleasure at the fact that everyone has been just so welcoming there and that um, everyone's been really, really supportive. Um, I think it is always important to reflect on the good sides of humanity uh, when things as tragic as this happen and uh, on last week's show I showed some of the positive clips there was the one I showed of the um, uh, the I think it was a Polish community center in North London where they were taking um, uh, donations for refugees and it was all piled up the wall and then there was a woman who mentioned going to a store trying to buy um, some paracetamol uh, painkillers um, and here in the UK I don't know what it's like elsewhere in the world uh, but there is a limit uh, that you're only allowed to buy two uh, packs at a time um, and so other people overheard her trying to buy more uh, and everyone chipped in uh, and gave medication and helped to take it and she was very emotional talking about it um, one image in particular that really st stuck with me this week um, one of the positive ones at least uh, was of a train station in uh, Germany where there was just a row of prams that had been left by uh, German residents so that when refugees arrived with their kids they would have um, prams to put their babies in and uh, let me see if I can find it um, here we go oh it was in Poland uh, let me see if yeah here we go uh let's load this up now i haven't set up my share screen today so forgive me if this doesn't work there we go uh look at that so um a row of seven empty prams left at uh Premizel railway station in poland in a heartwarming gesture of support for mothers crossing the polish border um yeah like go on humanity um it, it's it's good to see this in in, in tough times but um, yeah, so last week was a heavy episode and as is always the case with uh, this weekly show, we do a wide range of things. Sometimes we talk about world events, sometimes we delve into mental health and well-being. Uh, other times like today, we're going to be talking about life skills and in particular cyber security, which falls in line with the fact that I started a new job this week. But we also do a lot of light-hearted things as well um, and we do always end each live show with a word game. And the more of you that are watching 
the better because the more players we have, it's a cooperative game. And I can't remember actually, I don't know if I wrote down last week what level we got up to. I must have wrote it down. Did anyone remember? Someone scroll through last week's live show uh, and uh, let me know um, what level we got up to in this word game. Because basically, if you're typing in the chat on YouTube, uh, you get to play along. That's how everyone gets to play. And it's always really, really good fun. I just want to say a huge shout out to everyone I'm seeing in the chat. We've got um, Callie. Good to see you here. Mojo. Lovely to see you. Uh, who else we got? We got... Um, I'm going to scroll right up. Siego, good to see you here. Hannah, you mentioned that um, because of the snowstorm, you haven't been able to tune in. It's good to see you here as well. Kim, thank you for tuning in, my friend. Um, this is really, really great. Um, thank you very much, Joanna. Really appreciate it. And, um, you know, there are always much more informative sources, but the idea of this show is to kind of break down things into digestible forms, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Uh, when it comes to uh, cyber security. Um, I think I'll just say before I crack on uh, that milesdire.com is my website if you ever want to check out, although I need to update it now because I am fully employed uh, at a company that I'm absolutely loving and can't wait to tell you more about that. Um, if you do want to support the live show uh, and also the podcast, which is in the process of coming back, I say that every week, but we are edging closer patreon.com forward slash miles dyer and then right at the end where i am now active again on instagram this is the social media site that i use over anything else um and actually thank you very very much um if i was to actually bring it back onto the share screen uh, here we go um so yeah here's my instagram um quite some random stuff i mean this video i did what it won't show me what I did. Um, I mean, this was in December. This with me with the coat on, and then I think this was in January when I was just giving an update because I'd been really unwell. And then this was me relieved because I'm finally coming back, and I just lay down everything that I've been going through. I'm currently in this weird zone where I finished my antibiotics. I'm currently waiting for test results on a chest scan, a chest X-ray I had, um, and I'm overdue a blood test still uh, next Monday. Um, but at the moment I'm feeling good, but I felt good before and then the infection came back. So fingers crossed. This is the annoying thing about an infection. Well, there's a lot of annoying things, but it just takes a couple of cells to survive and then they multiply again uh, and that's it. But also if you wanted to see, I did show it on the last show actually, my bathroom, uh, a nice cool transition makeover. This is me in my work setup, looking at the desk here that I'm talking to you at and uh, I've gone with the colors of the company CybeSafe that I'm now working for. Um, I am their content development manager, or one of them, for marketing. Uh, and CybeSafe is a um, cybersecurity tool, uh, website, software, educational tool, all of the above really for companies. Um, but actually having posted about it, I've already heard about individuals that are using it. And what's really cool about it is you go on, you sort of fill out a questionnaire and it will give you a rating on different categories of what, of how much of a risk factor you are in this dangerous world in which there are people that are nefarious that want to hack in and, you know, have data breaches and, you know, do theft, uh, identity theft, all these things. But then it actually gives you the stepping stones on how to improve that score. And it means that companies that have this installed can set these are the articles that are relevant to our company, we want them featured, and they can tailor it uh, to what their company's, uh, company's needs are. And then they're able to track the cybersecurity quality across the board. Um, I've only been there three days now, uh, a lot of onboarding going on, getting to meet people, although it is a remote job, which I've never done before. That's been quite interesting, uh, not being in a, a massive office. Um, and it's also my first full-time job in five years. So I'm not gonna lie, there was a bit of anxiety there, um, a bit of a change, but one of the main reasons I moved away from freelance work was because, although for me variety is the spice of life, it's amazing working on such a wide variety of projects. I do miss, you know, working on long-term things. And I was like, I need to find something I'm passionate about and I can build on in the long future, not just with a project, but with a team. And I stumbled across this startup, CybeSafe, 
and every interview process and person I spoke to, it blew my mind because, you know, I would say they're just like me. They're very enthusiastic. They really care about bettering society um, and they're driven on a sense of belonging and compassion. Um, and especially when you think of cybersecurity as being often quite a clinical cold thing, um, there's a lot of heart to it. And the way they write their articles on the websites uh, and on their socials uh, are really fun uh, and interesting um, and so yeah I was sold on this company right across the board and um, in my role as the name suggests content development manager um, I get to be content led um, over the last 15 years I've worked for a wide range of amazing companies in marketing um, with a content led mindset but it has been marketing first in the more traditional style whereas here no, they really believe in, in in the content stuff. It doesn't mean you don't have the strategy and the marketing components aren't important as well, but it really does feel like home for me. And uh, I just can't wait to continue getting to work with it. So I would say watch this space. And it is actually why today I wanted to talk about uh, cybersecurity because I have been... I was going to say drowning, but that would... No, I am drowning, but the good kind of drowning. I've just been immersed in so much information um checking out all the platforms you know researching um learning about all the different values and um you know they have a lot of playbooks internally about how we like to conduct ourselves what our values are what the mission statement is the direction of travel and so i've not really had much time to think about anything else i've played a bit of horizon forbidden west on playstation 5 one or two hours a night if that um, but with all that, I was like, well, what am I going to talk about on this week's show? Last week was pretty heavy. Why don't I try and talk about cyber security? And so what I am going to be talking about today shortly, because we've got one more thing to do before we get to the main topic, is discuss, do you feel you're someone who is secure in the cyber landscape? And I have some really quick tips, some that I knew long ago, but some that I learned only this week that I'm gonna share with you that are quick and easy and just, you know, with little effort can actually empower you to ensure that when you conduct yourself online, you're just gonna be safer and um, much more, um, be better protected against, um, you know, those that are working with ill intent um, to cause harm or damage. Um, and so, yeah, we will, we will get to that. But there is a poll uh, on the chat. Um, and uh, fill it out. There's just three answers. It's asking, do you consider yourself to be cyber safe? And the three levels are not at all, a little bit, and a lot. But I've put them in a bit of a comical way, I think. What is cyber safe? Uh, and then the second one is... So I'm doing it off memory because I haven't got it up in front of me. Second one is, I mean, I, I, I don't use a bad password. Or no, I don't tell people my password. And then the last one is um, cybersecurity is my middle name, which means you're a pro. So, um, oh, you're just talking about the the other post. Uh, let me bring this up. Yes, um, the post that I did last night. Definitely check this out. Um, this was, it's weird that it doesn't let you pr press it, but then if you just type the URL. Um, this is, um, yeah, I did this last year, International uh, Women's Day. I just like to dedicate it. I because I was unwell, I didn't get to do it for International Men's Day. Um, so hopefully, I'll be I'll be better on form this time. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to go through um, some really important people in my life. Some some I know much more, much better than others. Um, but yeah, these are eight amazing. I almost had to count again. Then these are eight amazing women that um, if you get a chance, please head over to my Instagram. Just read the little bits about them and check them out because um, some of them, you know, work in activism. Some of them are artists. Uh, some of them are, are, are business uh, owners, um, fitness gurus. You name it. There's there's so much and so many brilliant, brilliant um, human beings that have inspired me, and uh, I was very um, humbled by their response as well. So yeah, wanted to mention that while you'd uh, put it in the chat. Um, Hey Steve, good to see you here. A pro move is always using password as your password. No one ever suspects it. That is very, very true. We will be talking about passwords shortly. Um, <laughs> uh, 
I was actually going to do that in a post. Um, I think I might still do that at some point. My post was going to be something like, um, you know, uh, doing a post saying here is some, you know, good passwords that you can use. And then and then at the end of it going, but don't use that one because um, on the example, because that's my one. F find, a, find a different one. Um, you said I was a cyber security pro, but I have a feeling I'm about to get school. Nah. T to be honest, I think even people that are at top of their game will still have gaps in their knowledge on what they can do. But the ultimate thing is when it comes to cybersecurity is we are in many ways walking around completely naked. Um, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing is um, using Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi. I mean, on London Underground here in, in London, um, in, in the UK, um, you have free Wi-Fi, which is great. But if you're downloading an email onto your phone using the Wi-Fi, that is coming through, you know, we're going to say through the air. That can be intercepted by anyone else that is using that public Wi-Fi. Um, so it's important that you use encryption or even better, you know, you just don't access personal stuff when you're on these public places. But again, I want to talk all about this. Um, Chris, I have COVID. Dude, super sorry to hear that. Um, I hope you've got a quick recovery and it's not hitting you too much. Um, a friend of mine actually had it um, in the last week and she got I mean I don't really want to say it because I don't want to worry anyone but she, she basically got hospitalized she's she's doing better now but um, it is just um, incredible how it affects people in different ways um... <laughs> Vault Boy another top tier move use your credit card number <laughs> yeah I mean any suggestions on that uh, my passwords are always the first phrase to pop into my head it's so secure that I don't even remember them sometimes yeah, look, lots of love for Chris. Yes, VPN. VPN indeed. Um, oh, man. Well, that's what we had to do in November with our hometown show. Um, we had to cancel because some of the band got COVID. I thought I had it, and then I didn't. And it turns out I've had, not worse, but I've had some bacterial infection that I've had for about three months now. And hopefully uh, is the last of it. Okay, right. Before we get to this, I'm even looking at my script. We're just bouncing all over the place, but this is great. Um, I treated myself because I got a new job to a little thing on Etsy that I saw advertised very well on Instagram and it arrived today and so I thought I'd just do an unboxing. So let's do it. It's going to be one of those things I'm like, is it going to be an interesting unboxing? It's going to be a quick one. But Etsy is so good for custom things. Okay, that's just come out straight away. And I was making sure I wasn't showing my address <laughs> for anyone that wants to pause and find out where I am. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to treat myself to something. And if anyone's... Oh, my goodness. This is super cute. So, many of you will know uh, I'm a massive gamer. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog was a childhood hero of mine, hence the Sonic the Hedgehog. They're called dioramas, aren't they? I don't know if that's what they're called. Well, a little statue. But this is amazing. These are... Mini Sonic the Hedge. Oh, wow, it comes with that as well. Um, do you know what? Let's just take the... These are mini Sonic the Hedgehog um, Mega Drive cartridges. I think this is awesome. They're super cute. Look how cute they are. Because when I saw that they were going to be small, I was a bit worried. But, um, yeah... These these three games were a big part of my upbringing. Sonic Three and Sonic Three and Knuckles. Um, right, that can go there for the moment. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, it's really cool, and I think it was like thirty pounds. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Yeah, I mean they're not they're not actual size, and I, that was the only thing I was a bit sh unsure about. I was like, they're going to be tiny cartridges, but actually, I think they're really really cute. So yeah, I'm I'm really really happy about that. Um, I always got confused with the Sonic the Hedgehog games because I had a Master System growing up, and when people talk about the original Sonic game, they talk about Sonic One on the Mega Drive or the the um, Genesis as it was in the US, but. I thought, what about the Master System, Sonic 1 and 2? 
But it turns out that Sonic 1 was released on both consoles at the same time. They are different games. Um, can you can you imagine full size ones like true? Although they do have a lot of these um, replicas of like PlayStation One games you can get with all the discs, um, but they are really really expensive. I wanted to get a Final Fantasy one. Although I do have my Final Fantasy Seven multi disc thing, so I do need to check that out. Um, anyway, right, okay, that's done now. I think it's time. And by the way, I mentioned at the very beginning, if you are tuned in, uh, do click that like button. It helps with the algorithm. Uh, and also, one other thing I was going to mention. Um, I said in the past that I found all these... Yes, um, they did have it on the Game Gear. And I always noticed that there was um, a level on Sonic 2. This is so specific for the live chat. But the opening level on Sonic 2 was like in a mine. And when you get to the boss, you spin down a little ramp and you go up. And then you go, you fall towards lava. And Dr. Robotnik picks you up and then takes you to the boss. But I always used to go side to side to see if I could not get caught and fall in the lava and die. And you could never, it could never happen. But then on the Game Gear, when I was playing it at my dad's friend's house who had it, I actually managed to die. And it's because on the Game Gear, the, um, not the ratio, or you know, the, the screen dimensions are actually different. And that's what impacted the game, which is such a weird small thing that I seem to remember. Um, so I mentioned in the past that I have all these shirts um, left over. I can't believe this is eight years old now. So um, for those that don't know, um, growing up, I founded a 24-hour non-stop live show event called Stickade from 2006 onwards that grew every year from, you know, hundreds of people watching to, in the end, millions uh, to raise money for um, UNICEF, uh, 24 hours of helping the world. And I have all these shirts left over. And I mentioned before that I was going to... Um, uh, you know, give them away to anyone that was going to pay for free postage. Sorry, pay for the postage and then I'll give you the uh, the shirts free. But because of the Ukraine crisis, and I mentioned last week that UNICEF has a fund to raise money for children suffering in the crisis in Ukraine, um, I'd love anyone that has any suggestions for this. Basically, I want to sell these, um, but all the money goes towards UNICEF to help the children in Ukraine. But I don't know how to do it in terms of if, if there's a particular website that's good for selling merchandise where they're not going to take a cut because this is for charity. I mean, I could do it for myself, myself where um, people could just email me and PayPal, but then people might PayPal once they're already gone. So, um, yeah, a very simple question, but it's something that I'm willing to do. But maybe we'll just start with the live show here. Um, I'll let you guys all get dibs on, on shirts that you want. Um, but I just thought because it was a fundraiser for UNICEF all those years ago, um, I think it's quite a nice way of bringing it back um, for um, their, their efforts with um, the children in Ukraine. So, yeah, we'll probably just do it where there'll be a minimum amount, but people can donate as much as they want um, because the children need it. Um, great. This is what I love about this show. Sometimes I come to it... Um, worried that um i'm not gonna have enough to say and other times uh like today i feel like i'm not gonna have enough time um but yeah i i just wanted to mention that while that was fresh on my mind because um i think it'd be a, a good way so hopefully we can sort something out for next week right cyber security um cyber security is something that is often seen as being as i mentioned already quite um uh, quite clinical, quite boring, uh, and I was just mentioning there's a UNICEF sh uh, shop in your town. If they're helping Ukraine, I'll go there and grab a few things. Yeah, do it, man. Do it. Once you're better, of course. Rest well. Rest well, my friend. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk to you about a few, few simple ways um <laughs> i'd be shocked to see you lost the words trust me there's many times uh when i'm i'm not with it completely or it's not that i'm lost of words it's I, I don't say anything that's very um sensical so 
some simple ways for cybersecurity. Now, um, Vault Boy Steve actually touched upon the first one I was going to talk about, which was passwords. Now, he says the one you should use is password because not a lot of people suspect that. And it's always depressing when you see in the news about like high government officials were actually using it. But you've got to look at what culture, what is it in the culture that makes people use really simple passwords? And it's all about convenience. Um, how many websites are you on? And they say, we need a password of this many characters using these these types of characters. Um, and you're just like, oh, not another one. I'll just, you know, use this. And, you know, we all get, I say we get lazy. It's not. We're just getting um, efficient with our time. You know, time is limited. We just want to access it. And we want to access it with something that we're going to remember so we can access it again because we're not going to write it down on a bit of paper and file it away somewhere. So one thing that's worth doing um, is using, um, there's, there's websites like One Password or LastPass. And these are websites where you create an account, you have your password to get into it. And then what it does is every, you, you install it onto your browser. And then whenever you get into a login on a website, it will generate a suggested password, which is long, lots of characters and everything. And then it will save it. So you only need to remember one password and make sure it's a good one and it's for that account and then that will allow you to um, have really complicated passwords, different ones for different websites. And the reason you want different ones for different websites isn't just because, um, you know, it, it just increases your security generally. Um, it, it's, it's the fact that, you know, if if someone gets into one of them, you don't want them to get into all of them. <laughs> uh, so that's really, really important. But the other thing is when it comes to passphrases, um, and when it comes to passphrases, um, often we think of maybe a word and then some numbers at the end, like password one, two, three, exclamation mark. But passphrases is the idea that you come up with three words or maybe more, come up with um, a sentence. Uh, Edward Snowden, I remember talking about this on a, on a show once, C come up with a, a, a line of a song and maybe you could alternate it. So like every other word is lowercase and uppercase. Um, your security is only as strong as the weakest link. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, coming up with three words. So um, my new Apple iPhone could be, um, could be a password. It's not. I mean, try it. <laughs> um, but yeah, passphrases is a really, really good way um, of doing it. Um, the next, I think there was something else I was going to say on passwords. No, so like using LastPass um, and then um, having three random words or more uh, or a memorable phrase is really, really important. Exactly. It is such a chore. It is such a chore. I love all these password suggestions coming up on screen. Um, oh, I, I remember in the days of MSN Messenger and someone hacked into mine. They got my account and then they were messaging me on it. No, I, I created a new one and messaged it and then they were talking back to me and I lost all my contacts. And when you think about all the personal exchanges you have on your phone, like um, I'll never forget when I was once working at a company and we had a tech company come in and pitch to us uh, and they did an exercise where we were sitting on this round table and they said, right, we want everyone to get out your phone and we want you to unlock it. Uh, we want you to put it down on the table. Now slide it to the person on your right. Now pick up the phone in front of you and have a browse for the next couple of minutes. And instantly everyone just grabbed their phone from the right. And they said, which I thought was a very controversial exercise, but it proved the point. They went, that is how valuable people's phones are. You know, it is an extension of your mind. I mean, I think Elon Musk even talks about how we are all cyborgs. It's just that the uh, computer component isn't yet, you know, ingrained in us. It's still an extension of us. Um, we put, put our memories in there. We put our thoughts in there. We have our most personal conversations with other people. Um, this isn't just the same as just, you know, hiding. I mean, it, people always say the idea of like, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear when it comes to cybersecurity. But it's like, well, then fine, give me your password for your emails. And they'll go, yeah, but I don't mean that. Well, why not? Well, because you might, you know, impersonate me. And it's like, well, yeah, 
that is why personal information is important because it's not just about what people might read it's about what will they use with that information will they use it for leverage uh will they use it to blackmail you will they use it to impersonate you there are all these consequences but often in life we always look through the the art uh, we, we always look at society through the eyes of how we view the world so if we have good intentions we like to think that everyone will be the same but unfortunately that is not always the case so um mega obnoxious how many websites require certain character types so i agree that always really really annoys me um a while back, someone sent me an email with a threatening message spelling out an old password of mine. I ignored it because it was such an old password, but it shows people to check to do check us out. Yeah, I um, I was when I was on Stickam on the live streaming site. I remember one day I was doing a, a live show on the front page, and I had someone DM me with my home address and phone number, uh, and they said, "I know where you live." Uh, and the only way I think they well, they could have been someone that I knew. But the only way I think they got it was, um, I don't know if many of you know this, but when you, and it might have changed actually due to EU regulation, although I don't know if it's changed again after Brexit. But when you um, create a website, I think it's called like Who Is Protection. And the fact that I'm even saying it like that shows that I don't fully know. But basically when you create a website, there's like a, a document with it of who owns it and it will have your uh, home address and phone number. Um, and so it's public knowledge. Um, and so you can then buy who is protection, I think it is, when you do your website, which basically jumbles it up with other information. But I think that's what it was, because at the time, I, th I think I looked up my website and realized that I hadn't got that protection. And so it was just out there. Um, it's amazing what you can find out about people. And when it comes to hackers, um, the truth is, if they want information, they'll find it. Like, there are ways of doing it. However... This is a comfort, but it's a really ugly comfort to have. You know when um, you hear stories about often elderly people that get emails from, you know, I don't know, it'd be like a, a Nigerian prince who who wants, uh, who's trying to get your money. And you look at these emails and you think, it is so obvious, why on earth would they have uh, fooled for it? Well, actually, the fact that it's so obvious is a part of the strategy, and this is why. If you were to do an email that was very convincing, you might hook people in who are quite savvy, but then who will suss you out by the second and third exchange. Whereas if you do an email that is so obviously fake and it still catches someone, that means they're quite gullible and it means they're more susceptible for the second and third round. So actually it's by design that these emails and these fake things are obvious. Because if you fall for that, then you're exactly the kind of person they can invest time in to uh, extort from. Um, so the reason I say that's a, a sad comfort, which is if you put in the at least the basics of protection, um, it means you're probably not going to fall under that category of person. Um, yeah, there you go. Steve mentioned, yeah, domains require details to be valid. Hence, without protection, anyone is who is you. That's right. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, Mojo, it's because it's 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 a money it's a money maker. Uh, it's a money maker. You know, when it comes to business opportunities in society, if you remove the moral component, it's all about what is um, the most amount of money I can make in the shortest period of time with the least amount of effort. Um, definitely get a password for your phone. Definitely, definitely. Um, Two-factor authentication, uh, we are getting to that in just a moment. So uh, there is a website that I found again through my company, CyberSafe, uh, called I Have Been... Do you say pwned? Is that how you actually say it verbally? I know it's meant to be owned with the P, but uh, have I been owned.com? Uh, and basically, if you go to this website... Mm -mm -mm -mm, uh, you basically put in your email or your phone and it will tell you if there's been a data breach. Uh, now, I would love it if this company actually, on the, and they do one password. Um, what I love is you put in your phone number and they're like, cheers, I've got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a good way to see if you've been a part of any uh, breaches. You got flagged a lot on it. Oh my God. 
Um, I love this. I mean, I have zero shame. I've been in a five-year relationship. Some internet romances were done long ago. And this is the thing. It's like compared to, um, you know, what people are like growing up now, um, where, you know, I even talk about this in terms of like privacy consent. You know, when I was a kid, um, the, you know, the, the photos that were taken of me were in photo albums. Uh, photos that are taken now of kids are put on Facebook without their you know, knowledge or consent. And so you're gonna grow up in a world where there are albums of you online for the whole world to see. Um, it, is, it is quite interesting. Um, there was another website, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but you know, I was talking about those scam emails that people send. There was a website that was set up that whenever you got a scam email, you forwarded it to this website and it had AI that would take over the conversation and the AI would constantly optimize because what it would do is it would respond to the scammer. And if the scammer responded, it would keep going. But when the scammer stops replying, the AI goes, I've lost them. And so it would optimize the language it uses next time. So it actually wastes, it, it manages to get more exchanges with this scammer. Uh, and so this website on the front page says, we've wasted X number of hours of scammers time, which is amazing because you're just automating the process. Although you do get a lot of YouTube channels where they mess around with these scammers and uh, it's it's really, really, really good. Um, so yeah, um, that's, a, that's a good website there. Um, let's, um, yeah, let's go back here. Um, uh, multi-factor, right, you, you mentioned two-factor authentication. Uh, Multi-factor authentication, MFA, is like the overall arching one. Um, who here knows about two-factor authentication? It's quite common on a lot of um, uh, websites now. Um, but multi-factor, <laughs> we're talking Welsh words. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but it's, it's very nice. But yeah, well, you, if you're Welsh, you know, for passwords, that that's great. Um, but yeah, length of password is what's important because if you're ever going to be using something that is going to be working through a password, you know, it's got to go through every possible combination and then for every extra character, it's magnitudes of scale of how many combinations it's going to need to try. Um, even if you're just using basic alphabetical characters. So yeah, multi-factor authentication is the idea that you have more than one method of authentication to get into a website or a service. So one factor is a password, or it could be a password. So that means you put in a password and then you're in, but that is it. But on things like Google uh, and things like that, um, they will ask for two factor. So it'll be, we're gonna send you a text to your phone or to your email address, or we'll phone you up there's all these methods. Um, and and just by having multi-factor authentication, it takes you from about 50% security to 99%. It's magnitudes of scale. Um, but there are three main methods, okay? It's the things that you know, it's the things that you have, and it's the things that you are. So the things that you know, knowledge. So that could be passwords, um, it could be, uh, you remember, memorize uh, memorable data, which I always thought was some of the lamest security um, protection because um, I'll never forget ages ago, I had someone just ask me on MSN back in the day saying, hey, Miles, what is your mother's maiden name? It's like, oh, that's an interesting question. I'm not going to tell you. And then I realized that when I do those memorable questions, or answers that I actually make fake ones <laughs> and have to memorize them instead. But that is, you know, that's just one factor. So, you know, you might you might have a password and then use memorable data. That's not two-factor authentication, uh, I don't think. Uh, actually, I'd have to check that. Maybe it is. I'd argue it isn't because it's only one of the main types. That's just things you know, knowledge. Then it's things that you have, possessions, so a phone. So if someone manages to steal my password and it's saying, right now do the number that we've sent to your phone within the next minute, if they don't have my phone as well, they're not getting in. So that gives you so, so much extra protection. Um, really, really important. 
And then it's things that you are uh, inherent. So this is biometric data. It could be fingerprints. It could be voice recognition. I'm going to say it could even be location data. Um, I would need to check on that as well. But that is who you are. That is your location. Um, it could be retina scans or just general facial recognition. So whenever you have an opportunity on sites to have multiple uh, authentication, uh, go for it because it really does like, I think it is actually one of the best ways to give you extra security because arguably then you don't even need to worry about having a really outrageous password. Although improve your chances by, um, as, as Vault Boy Steve was mentioning at the start, you're only as, um, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So yeah, two-factor authentication is really popular. I know companies like Epic Games that does Fortnite. I think if you set it up, you get like free V-Bucks or a skin in the games. So they encourage people to do it. Um, two-factor authentication is the most mainstream one and I recommend everyone uses it. Uh, public Wi-Fi, I already mentioned earlier about the idea of how naked you can be. Uh, here we go. I don't suppose it has to be the mother's maiden names that is used on cards, etc. It could be another relative. Yeah, I just still think that it's just such a terrible way of security. Um, I really, really do. Um, oh, this is sad. My dad has vascular dementia and was nearly pulled in with one of those scams, but he knows never to send money. He gave them information, though, but that just leads to more scammers calling. Yeah, it does. Um, someone that I worked with at The Guardian many years ago, he had uh, a separate email. He, no, he told me he knew of someone, which always makes you think, I bet it's you, but you're not claiming it. Uh, but no, he said he knew someone who, out of interest, any time he signed up for a deal or anything, he would set up a new email address for it. And then what it meant was he could then just, out of curiosity, see which promotional deals actually led to the most spam. Because some of them you sign up for and the inbox stayed empty. Uh, and others, you just got absolutely flooded because they passed the information. The amount of companies I get emailing me asking me for sponsorship deals, and it's just like, take me off whatever list you're on. And they don't do it. <laughs> they just like, you know, they leave it. And it's um, it's, it's, it's very, very, very uh, irritating. So, um, yeah, we were talking about public Wi-Fi. Um, there was actually something in a Cyber Safe article from a journalist, Maritis, uh, or Maritz, uh, who said, we took a hacker to a cafe and in 20 minutes he knew where everyone else was born, what schools they attended, and the last five things they Googled. Um, there was an article many years ago that there were uh, bins or litter, litter trash cans, um, litter bins, Westminster. Let me have a look, privacy. I can't find it. But there were basically uh, commercial, commercial, um, uh, like commercials played on uh, the sides of litter bins in Westminster. And when you walked past, it scanned your data through your Wi Fi your, uh, and then it would put commercials on it based on your data. Now, I always make jokes with, I wonder if someone got like Viagra or something come up. Um, <laughs> there are bins in London where. Um, but yeah. And that was just an example of like egregious uh, overstepping of people's privacy rights. But the truth is, when you're out there, you are naked. So having VPN is really important. Um, using encrypted um, texting services. I deleted WhatsApp when there was the mass exodus of like tens of millions of people going from that to Telegram and Signal. Uh, although WhatsApp has actually um, taken things back now and has improved it. But um it's only a matter of time until they'll slip. But they're, you know, companies are ultimately, um, they're looking for ways of making money and data is a great way of making money. But if there is a real demand for privacy rights, which I know Apple takes very seriously, then they will lean in that direction. Um, they will follow the money. Um, so the, the only other thing I would mention is fake URLs. So when you get an email, uh, and you're not sure about it, and you have a link to press, how do you know if the link is legit? Because the link could say amazon.com forward slash, you know, whatever, 
but it could that could be what the text says, but it could actually take you somewhere else. How would you deal with that? Kay was just mentioning updating the software on our device is also important. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, how how would you check it? There are, there are two ways you can check it. I knew the, 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 the first way. I didn't know the second way. Yes, uh, I've forgotten the name off the top of my head. I'm trying to get him onto my podcast at some point. There's a lot of companies like that at the moment. So scrolling your cursor, if you put your cursor over the link at the bottom of your browser, there you go, Hannah mentioned it, hovering over link to see what comes up. Yeah, when you hover over a link, it will tell you in the browser where it's actually going to. Also, you want to look at what's suspicious, suspicious because if it's like Amazon, amazonco.uk, there's lots of sneaky ways that they can do it. But, Sometimes you might be sent uh, a bit.ly link or a short link and if you put your cursor over it, it will still tell you what that short link is in the bottom. So there is actually a website that I found out through Sidesafe um, called Virus Total. Uh, let's load this up. And here you... It's to analyze suspicious files, domains, IPs, and URLs to detect malware and other breaches, automatically share them with the security community. So, yeah, you could just put a URL in here and it will do a check for you. So, Virus Total, great website. Keep that handy if you're ever, ever, ever not sure. Um, yeah, grammatical errors, things that are just very, very uh, sneaky indeed. Um, Yeah, exactly. It's it's all in the wording. There's always exclamation marks in emails. Um, sometimes people will pretend to be like, oh my God, it's um, so and so. You know, it, people can easily find out who a relative of yours is and then you could text and say, hey, um, what happened? Oh, there was um, my auntie uh, got a text um, saying um, someone has been tested positive that you know for COVID. So you need to come for a PCR. So they give you an address. Uh, to go to and it's actually uh, a car park where they were mugging people you know um i once had someone phone me who claimed to be virgin media so i got well i say this it could have been virgin media but i think it was a massive flaw on their part and they went hi mr dyer this is virgin media uh we've come to and, and you know they do ring from time to time to tell me about deals that i just honestly couldn't care about because it means me spending more money for more services that i don't need um, but, um, yeah, they, they said, Hey, Mr. Dyer, Virgin Media here. Um, but I I are you free to chat? Which they always do. I was like, yeah, great. Before we proceed, can we just do some security checks? And then they started asking me security questions. And I said, well, can you prove who you are? Well, sorry, sir. We can't do that. Well, I was like, well, you're, you've just phoned me up. Um, and so when I get sent emails for stuff like Amazon that I'm not sure about or things that I think could be faking it. I always manually go to the website myself. If you're getting an email saying that there's there's something you need to resolve, whether it's like Royal Mail or it's um uh you know um you know a delivery, sorry, an order that you've made on Amazon, just don't use the delete the email and just go into go into your account yourself. Just manually go the way that you would. Type the website in, log in how you would. I always get nervous when I go via an email. Um, Virgin Media is always a scam, legit or not, yeah. Um, when you go in to, um, when I have an email that has a link to log in, so e verification emails always makes me nervous, even though most of them are legit, because I've just gone on the website. Um, I'm like, no, I'll just do it, do it myself. So I really, really, really recommend that. Cool. Um, th the last point I'm going to make about this, and I have to say this is, gone a lot better than I expected. Um, so yeah, hopefully some of those tips worked and got you thinking about things. Um, ultimately, when it comes to problem solving in the world, it's it's about not victim blaming. Um, you know, the, the most obvious example you hear is about horrific stories of women that are getting hassled or stalked or, and you know, it's always the questions of how much did you have for, to drink or what were you wearing and all this victim blaming. Um, and 
I think that when it comes to cybersecurity, ultimately we have to acknowledge that it's not because of flaws of people. It's just because there are very good people online and there are nefarious ones that are trying to violate uh, people's um, identities, you know, create data breaches and things like that. And so, you know, with these solutions, it's all about empowering. Um, and I think empowerment is a really, really important thing because it's how you can build better communities. It's about educating and um, just sharing information because actually a lot of the stuff that I learn about cybersecurity, I, I did a video many years ago about how on your Apple phone you can go to a certain page in your location settings and it says you were at this place between these minutes of the day and here um, and yeah, it's and people see and go, oh, it's like a party trick. Like, I didn't know that. I, I will try this. And it's about finding life hacks that can empower us as a society because at the end of the day, the last line of defense is you. Um, and I think that's really, really, really important, especially with digital citizenship when I taught it. Um, you know, when you look at child protection and things like that, the last line of defense is the child themselves. So it's important that we educate society, we empower people, not because it should be the responsibility of the potential victims, whether it's cybercrime or anything like that. But the last line of defense is actually important. Um, to have systems in place so if heaven forbid something was to go wrong that at least there is a final chance of, of making it right and so yeah um, I just wanted to sort of say that with it um, cool look guys we've got nine minutes to go um, we went through it really really quickly um, I'm just having a look here um Even if they did all of the wrong things, they're traversing an often hostile environment that they don't fully understand. Um, sorry to hear that, dude. Yeah. Um, you know, I do think we live in the most civilized age in human history. Um, a lot of progress has been made. And you can say this about a lot of issues, but there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. Um, and that comes from having conversation uh, it comes from discussing experiences um, and it's not just experiences of you know when you've been the victim of stuff it's about discussing experiences where you may have been a perpetrator of wronging someone else um, I talk a lot about that on my podcast um, you know most notably one of the first episodes I talked about when I was in primary school telling racist jokes uh, because I got laughs I didn't do it because I thought it was racist I did it because I got rewarded for that behavior and then it was only when I told it and I clearly um caused hurt to a fellow pupil i was mortified i was like eight nine years old if that uh and that moment of empathy was a real teachable moment now i wish i hadn't had to have a teachable moment like that but talking about it uh made other people identify with okay so why does this happen okay i was doing it because i was being rewarded for it so clearly we need to be doing better in our education systems i mean i've always said education is about teaching life skills should be about setting yourself up for life a lot of teachers believe it but unfortunately they don't write the curriculum so whether it's um you know sex education with relationship skills whether it's digital citizenship whether it's compassion and empathy whether it's cooking although i keep being reminded that a lot of people out there were taught to cook when you were at school um you know these are things that should be taught finances if I didn't do my taxes as a freelancer, I'd go to prison. Um, and yeah, there is a state of... Oh, yeah. There is a PlayStation state of play in six minutes. So we're going to have to play this game shortly. But my point was that... Edu and first aid. Um, and, and my point was that if, if you don't do your taxes, you go to prison. And yet you're not taught it in school. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, guys, I want to say a huge thank you for everyone tuning in. Um, there are 13 of you right now. So if you haven't already, do click the like button. Um... It's one of my favourite times of the week. Really, really enjoy it. Uh, and I'm having an absolute blast. Um, we're going to play a game. Uh, we're going we're gonna to play it now. So let me just load it up. Um, for those that have never played this before, basically, we're going to get a random set of letters and we have to guess as many four-letter words or longer with it. And we're working as a team. But you can only guess one word, correct word, every so often. Do you know, I'm going to stop explaining it. We'll play it and you'll get it. You'll get it. Here we go. 
Man, this is the thing about this show, is just when I think there's not gonna be enough content, we go way into overtime. Uh, and it's amazing. Uh, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Screen. Here we are. Uh, share screen. Oh, it is on Safari. Great. So um, you can type in the chat to play this, but I think you might have to scan the code to join the game first. Remind me, people. Oh, it tells us what the record is here. My Apple Watch just told me I got a match on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Level 14. Okay, okay, we're gonna do this. Uh, let me load up my chat because I wanna play along as well. Let's get going. Last time it didn't actually play the audio, and I don't know why. It's not playing it this time either. I don't know why. Cool. Let's go, everybody. Good luck. Oh, no, I, ju I just put music on myself, didn't I? Uh, Cool, I'm gonna be playing along now. And then eventually they put in fake letters that you don't include. Let's beat level. <laughs> I'm allowing porn, but I don't think porn is. I don't know why not. Uh, and also it's in alphabetical order that can be quite a good clue but you can see there's those padlocks so when you guess a word correctly it then locks you out until it gets to another lock point also let's finish the uh, poll I'm glad no one voted cyber what I'm proud of you 80% say, I mean, I don't share my password. 0% said cyber what? And 20% of you said cyber security is my middle name. Give yourselves. Right, uh, we, we've, we've got enough to go on to the next level. Uh, God, there was a fi two five letters. I'm not really that excited for State of Play just because of um, there was no PSVR 2. Yeah. Well done, everyone. By the way, is the sound level, the music level right? It's not too loud. It'll be sometimes hard for me to work it out. Let, oh, we skipped two levels. There we go, level three. Let's do this. And also, like, I can shout out words when I can't. Oh, time. Time is one. Well done. Okay, so they're all four letters, but there's one five letter, and then there's one seven letter. Ah, oh, Vault Boy Steve says, I'm expecting that acquisition announcement. Capcom or Square Enix would be... Well, it's Japanese. Oh, no, Capcom is Japanese, isn't it? Because it, it is Japanese studios, isn't it, they're talking about? What if it is Square Enix? Or um, what if just the rumours of um, Metal Gear Solid or Silent Hill with um, Konami? What if it was all three? The trifecta. Um, imitate. Well done, Joanna. Brilliant. Well played. Um, yeah, because Konami just focuses on um, mobile games now, don't they? Uh, oh, this track's on Beat Saber. I love it. New Beat Saber's amazing, by the way. And I was very grateful that Beat Saber featured me on their Instagram story last night. Legends. 
Matt. What a guy. Oh, we've got two. Can we go for them all? Now, look, they're, they're, one begins with M and one potentially begins with T. Tame. Another T A. Tate, T A T E. No. Well done, guys. We smashed that. We, we skip another three levels. This is really good. The thing is, the frame rate on um, screen is never that great on this broadcast software. I don't know why. I need to work it out. Um, maybe if I had a second screen, it would work. Wow, look at this. Grid. Someone could do grid. G-R-I-D. Vault Boy Steve, if you're watching it while still here, you can just post in the chat when some announcements come up. Dung. I could play it on here, but I think it'd be really poor quality. I need to stand up. I love that I now move this up, but then I'm going to have to move it down again. <laughs> Guys, we are smashing it today. This is the strongest team. What is it's another Oh man, beginning with G or something. Doesn't it's annoying it doesn't tell you. Skipped another two levels. So level fourteen is the one to beat, everybody. It's cream, not a word. Does it need another E at the end? Okay, there's a fake letter. So, that might be, it might be M. I'm just going to put a few. Uh, yeah, I think M is the fake letter. Because it won't let you use it if it is. Yeah, M. M is the fake letter. Oh, they always start with something really underwhelming game-wise, don't they? I was going to put Mesa. <laughs> Mesa, but then it's like... Yeah, but then no M. There is a six letter. Because March would have been great. But it's not going to be there. Is it? Archer. Is it Archer? <laughs> Woo! Whoa. Didn't expect that. I mean, I should have had it with this. Archer. That was too quiet. And now it's ruined the music. It's 
sorry, I never get the big one. <laughs> okay, let's keep going, guys. Ah, oh, Steve, I need to rent um, Returnal again. Because when I got to the third boss, killed it, popped the trophy, and then it crashed. So I had to redo it again. I just said I'm going to have to come back to this, and I never did. You absolutely smashed that game. And I, I genuinely want to see where the story goes. Uh, oh, Lollipop. Well done, Mojo. So Jay is the fake one. Polio is actually a really good one. Mojo's doing great. What is the true ending? Is it like... Obviously, I'm not asking for the spoiler, but is it that you get a choice at the end? Or is it like an end game thing to get the true ending? Or Yeah, I need to go back to it. Something I didn't talk about, actually, was... I've, I've hardly done any gaming this year because I've been so unwell. And my friend Rob, who works for PlayStation Access, he presents on it. Um, he bought me um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla for Christmas. And I've never played an Assassin's Creed game, so I started playing it. And then I was like, man, this is massive. And then I bought Cyberpunk when it finally got the next-gen version a week ago. And then the rentals I got all came late two days before I started my new job, which was Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West. Man. I assume you don't have to do that in the same turn, right? Uh, but, I, okay, I get what you're saying, Steve. That's awesome. Well done, guys. Sorry, I was not paying attention there. Me and Steve were just game, chatting game. I know, dude. Too many games. Okay, level 12, guys. We are three levels away. Let's do this. Wow, look at that. We need 90 points. Go, go, go. This looks like it's going to be a tough one. Is Jill? No. Elf? No. Nigel. Lean. Sure. Oh no, it's E A N. Isn't Glen like a, a location? Yeah. Um. Oh man. Okay, we're getting all the four letters. We're a third of the way there, and we've used a third of our time. So this is going to get crunchy. We don't know what the fake letter is, do we? Or is it J? It is J, isn't it? Liege. Well done. Oh, yeah, Ghost White Man. If that gets a VR patch, I'm looking forward to that, actually. Um, Genie. Surely Genie. Yeah, yeah, Genie. So, J. There is no J for sure in this. Oh, my goodness. We're running out of time. Feeling, Hannah, well done. Let's have some video game style music. This is a tune. Oh, this is almost got guys. We we need to we need to get like two more. Glean. Oh no. We did it. Woo! Fleeing. Oh, Jo Joanna and Hannah. It's the Annas. Save the day. We are almost at the level that we were at last time. We need to get to 14. So we need to complete this level, guys. Well done. Oh, man, I was I felt sick in my stomach then because I really want us to do this. Okay, let's do this. Helmet. Oh, 
Why is Helmet? Oh, Helmet is going to be a part of the fake letter. <laughs> I thought someone else has done meth already. Is Has it got two T's? No. Theme? So H is the fake letter. Oh god, this is not good. I'm just making up words now. Telly? Come on. What is the hidden letter? I hate the H. Oh my. Oh no, 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 no. It's not going to let us know what it is. P, 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 P. Pelt. Come on, guys. Just P words, P words. Oh, one more, one more, one more. Oh, man. <laughs> that was so tense. That was so, so tense. We were one away from our top score. Well done, well done, well done. All right, everybody. Look, this is why we do one at the end of every show, because there's a real sense of, like, we have to get it, because otherwise it's not going to be good. Um, look, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone for tuning in this week. Uh, hopefully you took away some good tips. Um, lots for me to think about over the next week. I need to clean this office out for sure. Um, but, yeah, I'm really enjoying the new job. Everyone is really lovely. Um, I work with a great guy called Joe, who's my boss. Um, he's such a dude and uh, I feel like he's really going to help me uh, get a lot more structure in my life and really build up like you know getting the getting the most out of me that's what you know great leaders are about they're about helping direct you and stuff like that and I've seen a lot of it at the moment um, so yeah um, the only things I have written down are oh yeah let's end on this Oh, what? Is it not going to let me? Why is it not? Wow, it won't even let me go to the page. Uh, okay. Let's go here then. Ta da Okay, everybody. Uh, just some final news. Uh, as I've mentioned before, my band's album, Unity in Time, is now out. You can buy it uh, at schematheory.com. Um, I have been asked many times about the lyrics of our songs. Um, so I've been putting them together and uh, did voices quite a while ago. But I've just put Prism up which it's not going to let me do, but if I do this, um, here are the lyrics for Prism, which is all about social media and the brutality of the fact that we live in a status economy and people love to shit on other people, to build themselves up and put others down. Uh, and so this is just about the brutality of the online world. Um, so check it out. Uh, and the reason it's called Prism is because of this line, status is a prism with incoming light it's fight or flight it's the idea that we're all prisms we have incoming light from society and it's all about how we position ourselves to deflect it in the best possible way uh so you can check that out if you want lyrics um and then oh my goodness sorry
This is just ah. Uh. Do you know I might actually have the image from last time? No, I, I got rid of it. Okay, it's now not letting me access here. This is so ridiculous. Um, schematic theory. Uh, we are going on tour. Um, so uh, a week on Friday, we're going to be playing the Acoustic Couch Community Centre in Bracknell. Uh, so if you're in the Reading area, come down to Bracknell. Uh, we're then playing in Bristol on March 20th, which is a Sunday. Uh, then we're on Friday, March 25th, we're playing in Workington. Uh, we're then playing in Whitchurch. And then we are playing in Nottingham. Uh, and then later this year, we'll be playing Newcastle-upon-Tyne, uh, Rotherham, Liverpool, and then uh, Colville towards the end. And then we're looking towards playing a special show in November, hopefully a hometown show or a London show for our 10-year anniversary um you don't want to you don't want to miss this um <laughs> prison yeah <laughs> there we go man Ah, oh, workington dude workington i had an absolute blast at we played there dude yeah should you come and see us i believe it's free entry um so yeah no please do um we've been getting so many more reviews coming in and they've been absolutely fascinating there's a lot of reviews and stuff um and yeah we're just really really pleased about this album um which you can order now and also we still have the bundles uh with these shirts look this is what it's like i'm having to buy our own bundle i'm buying one of these because the shirt is so so awesome um but yeah the album is lovely uh even the inside uh... yeah all about unity and the fact that it came out the day after the Russian invasion has meant the song has resonated uh, or sorry the songs have resonated with people a lot more than I was expecting um, so yeah no gigs in Wales we've played so many shows in Wales in the past um, oh okay a co-op patch interesting right I need to tune although it's going to be over soon anyway um, so I wonder what they're going to end on um, but anyway I'm going to end it there, everybody. Look, huge thanks for everyone tuning in. Um, and uh, I will see you next Wednesday. Love, respect, empathy. And while I look for the finish button, uh, where all your comments appear at the end, just let me know what you thought of the show uh, and anything else you'd like to say. And I will see you next Wednesday. Adios, till next time.
Have a good week. Love you all.